What's going on, brothers and sisters? So to understand what God is seeking, well, to give us understanding what we're seeking for and what God wants is relationship. In order to understand this, we have to go back to the beginning. Now, you remember, you have to empty your cup. Your cup has to be empty. It's you and God. So let's go back to the beginning. I'm going to go read in uh, Jan 2-7. Okay? Genesis 2-7. Um, the Lord God formed man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And the man became a living being. Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden. And there he put the man he had formed. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. In the middle of the garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So there's a tree of life and a tree of good and evil. You notice this? Now, the Lord took the man. I'm going, I'm jumping in to Gen 15. I mean, Gen 2, 15. I'm jumping forward. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. To work it and take care of it. Many people these days, they don't want to work. They don't want to do anything. That's not what God created us to do. He didn't create us to do nothing. We are supposed to work. But why are we working is the question. To put him in the Garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat, of it you will surely die you will surely die now when god speaks he speaks in wisdom he doesn't speak in literal that's human humans very literal god speak to the core to your spiritual self to your soul not the physical body that's a man that's the flesh he's talking about your soul your spiritual self you will surely die Okay, so I'm moving, I'm moving forward to um, 2.19. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the beasts of the field and all the birds of the air. He had brought them to the man to see what he would name them and whatever the man called each living creature, that was his name. So the man gave names to all the livestock and the birds of the air and all the beasts of the field. But um, but for Adam, no suitable helper, helper was found. So the Lord God caused the man to fall asleep, into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's ribs and closed up the place with flesh. Then the Lord made a woman from the rib. He had taken out the man. He had brought her to the man. And the man said... This is now my bone of my bones and the flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman, for she was taken out of man. Now, what people get confused is that there's a separation. For some reason, there's a, a separation between man and a woman. Like a woman has this kind of job and a man have this kind of job, you know. But but that is all wrong. And this is why things falls apart. This is why a man and woman always like bump head. Because there is some, some kind of power separation between the two. You know, two natures that like cannot connect to each other because of the un misunderstanding of their purpose. Now look at this. 
It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable, suitable for him. A helper. Think about it, man. You can't cover all your responsibility, all the grounds, you know. You need help. You can't do it. it you, you will burn out. And so that work is split between the two. And this is what God said. Remember this. Adam and Eve did not have a father and mother. But this is what God said. For this, this is number 24. Verse 24. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife. And they will become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and they felt no shame. No shame. United. There is no separation between the man and the woman. The man and the woman become one. United. In one purpose. In one accord. In one agreement. For they have no shame. They work together. That's what's marriage about when two are together they work together there's not what she said or i said this is what i say you know there is no rebellion against the house of god you know it's supposed to be a unified uh a harmonized discuss things move together you cover this area i cover this area move together raise these kids move together i do this with the kids you do that with the kids this is what you're good at this is what you get at. this is what i'm good at this is my gift up let's 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 nurture these kids this way and let's give them the great wisdom this is how it's supposed to be but what happened there is a separation still even though you're in marriage you still have a separation the two is not one there's still somehow a separation and that needs to stop and that's not your fault we just don't know we don't know, understand the world doesn't have a good way of explaining things. We learn this as we go. We, we repeat a, certain, a, a generational curse. We repeat the same thing that our parents and our, their parents and their parents do because they didn't know how to do things. But it's, it says here that you had to become one in nature pretty much. So let's go to Gen 3. This is what's awesome here too. Uh, 3, 4. You will not surely die. Now, this is the serpent telling the, uh, the people, the uh, Eve. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing God, knowing good and evil. You will be like God, knowing good and evil. First of all, why would you want to be like God? Why would you want to know good and evil if you have everything you have and God gave you, gave you authority to rule over all animals and all living creatures in the world? why but the serpent has a way in introducing stuff like that to make it interesting so then so then when the woman saw the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable see there you go desirable is our desires desirable for gaining wisdom she took some and ate it and she also gave it to Adam so it's desirable see the serpent could introduce you a nice juicy fruit a nice juicy product but you had to be able to bite it so he made it desirable she was desirable she find interest in that God doesn't force himself. The serpent doesn't force himself on you. We had to bite it. So, so it's always a desire that got us in trouble. So, Gen 3 8. So, let me go move down to Gen 3 8. This is awesome. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking. God was walking in the garden of cool of the in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called called to the man, Where are you? God is calling for them. Hey, where are you guys? Come on, this is God. God knows what's up. He's like, where are you guys? They hid in fear. 
They'd hidden fear. They never had fear, but now they're afraid of God. Why? Because they're naked and disobey God. So he said, he answered, I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. I was naked and, I, and so I hid. And he said, who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, the woman you put here with me, she gave me fruit of the tree and ate it. The Lord God said to the woman, what is this you have done? And the woman said, the serpent deceived me and I have ate it. You see what's going on? They're playing a the blaming game. Pointing finger. Guess what, man? We all know how to do the blaming game. It was her fault. She did it. She made me. You know, we're always blaming. Like right now, there's religious religion right now. We, we're going to come before God and we're going to be, well, that priest told me this. That pastor told me this. You know, doesn't work that way. Everyone's going to get punished for what they're doing. Even I, even I, if I'm misleading you right now, I'm going to be punished for it. I'm going to be, I'm going to be punished for lying. I'm going to be held responsible for misleading you guys. But I know I'm not misleading you because all I'm doing is directing you straight to the Lord. Just you and God. Not you, me, and God. It's you and God. I'm nobody. I'm just dust from the ground. So please, brothers and sisters, you and God, go to the beginning. Read it. Seek the truth. Go back to the garden. What was there and why were they kicked out? study it this is your answer right here and then everything else will fall into place god will speak to you this is why this is happening to you this is why you're making the wrong choices this is why this is why this is why but you had to go back to the beginning because you had to start fresh you had to understand what sin is sin is disobedience sin is pretty much a disobedience to god's nature that's pretty much it so every one of us sin. No one's perfect. Every one of us is sin because some way or another, we are disobeying God. We are disobeying His Spirit who's telling us to do this and do that, follow His direction. We're all disobedient. And then we have to come in repentance. Repentance means change. You can't just say, I committed sin, I did this, let me go confess my sin. And then you go do it again. No. Repentance means I, I'm aware that I sin. I want to fix it. Lord, help me fix it. Forgive me for it. I'm going to fix it. I don't want to do that kind of thing again. You learn from it and you fix it so you don't commit that sin again. That's what repentance is. It's the correction of your previous nature. Repentance, that's what it is. It's not like Constantine who was murdering a lot of people in the Roman Empire. And he think that by getting baptized, he was going to be saved. I highly doubt he's in heaven. He misunderstood the scripture. And that's why all that teaching that they had back then is incorrect. It's all incorrect. You know, Re look into it. Do some research on that. He believed that he could commit sin and murder as many people as he can. And God would still take him because he was already had a knowledge and aware that he could get baptized for the forgiveness of his sin. But yet, between no the, that knowledge and the time he did get that baptized, he was murdering people. Do your research. But anyways, don't follow those ways. Don't follow no man. Don't follow religion. Don't follow church. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let God teach you himself like he said he would. Give him that opportunity to be with you. That's the first step. You and God, only you and God, and let him lead you and start you reading so he could speak to you and be persistent on it. And then I'll get to you what's going to happen next. But it starts with you and God. Not you and God and this person, this person, this person. No, it's you and God first. Okay? You and God first. Everything else comes after. But make sure you always, it's always you and God daily. You and God first. You and God first. I love you, brothers and sisters. God bless you. Amen.